What did you think when you entered the ISS for the first time? Over. Well, I'll tell you, when I saw it for the first time, I thought it was huge. It was just a beautiful uh, golden star when we approached it with the space shuttle. And this time, when I got in to the space station from the small Soyuz, it really felt big. The station is uh, like a five-story house. It's pretty amazing. Over. What sort of character traits are needed to be an astronaut? Over. I think you asked what sort of character traits need to be an astronaut. Well, I think you need to get along with others. Uh, you have to have the science and math background. Um, it's good to be good with tools. It is also good to be athletic and healthy because it, it demands a lot on your body. Over. Did you have any critical situations up there yet? Over. Well, we've had some interesting situations so far. Um, nothing too critical like maybe a fire or a depressurization, but we have had problems installing big power boxes, which means power is gone. Uh, and also just yesterday we had a, a visiting vehicle, HTV, abort, which made it uh, fly away from the station pretty quickly. Over. How are the sense and opinions dealt with during a mission? Over. Great question. You know, um, we trained together for a couple of years beforehand, so you know each other's personalities and you know how to um, understand and deal with people, uh, each other up here. So usually there's not very many dissenting opinions because we discuss a lot uh, to make an opinion. Over. Why did you want to work on the ISS and would you do it again? Over. The ISS is amazing. It's an engineering project as well as a science project, and I was lucky enough to be part of the construction and now working doing a lot of science experiments as well as spacewalks and robotics. And so it's one fun thing after another. For example, yesterday we did uh, some cleaning in HTV. Today we're doing uh, work on the oxygen generation system. So every day is different and it's interesting, and I would do it again. Over. What did you learn in school which helped you most to become an astronaut? Over. I think I learned a lot about uh, you know science and math, of course, and I loved science and math both of them when I was in school, but also just uh, about uh, being a team member and how to deal with people as a swimmer, as a competitive swimmer, and then being in the Navy. Uh, over. Are you happy that you don't see any advertisements on the ISS? Over. I am, because that just makes people's opinions of, uh, about the station uh, thought that you might think might be based on advertisements versus uh, real ideas of how things should be. So yeah, I think I'm happy there's no advertisements over. Is there an app and a zone defined from the ISS? Over? Over. Well, sort of, because we have lights on the overhead, which means you know which is up and the writing is that way, but it doesn't really matter when you come down to it or how you place things or stow things or even sleep over. What kind of experiments are conducted on the ISS? Are these those secret or what? It's not really secret, just sometimes it's proprietary because we do have some commercial uh, like companies who are doing experiments up here, so that's proprietary, but nothing secret. Um, the thing that we're doing is... Uh, experiments in biology stuff on ourselves, material science, engineering, coming up with new ways uh, to live and work in space as well as exercise. So there's a whole range of science experiments as well as on the outside of the station. Over. In your opinion, what is the most promising experiment on board this time? Over. I think some of the capillary flow experiments which will help uh, uh, create uh, fuel tanks that don't need pumps because we work on capillary flow in space. To, uh, to create new types of uh, engine fuel tanks for future travel in space. You don't have to worry about things breaking. Over. What are the main differences between the outbound missions on the ISS and the technical activities on Earth? Over. Well, uh, they're, they're generally when you're doing uh, when you're doing tasks up here that you plan for on the ground, those seem very familiar. I think the most difference is uh, just living in microgravity and having your tools in microgravity, which you can lose pretty easily. So, microgravity.
gravity and, and some of the subconscious things you do, like when you're eating and when you're sleeping, that's what's different. Over. Do you have alcoholic drinks on the ISS? Over. <laughs> Do you have uh, alcoholic drinks on the ISS? Over. Uh, I, I missed your question. Something about being on the ISS. Say one more time. Over. Do you have alcoholic drinks on the ISS? Over. Oh no, not not really. We don't just, we don't have that up here. Today, so you know we're sort of on call all the time just because we're on the spaceship and so outside is sort of dangerous. And so no, we don't do that up here. Over. Do you wish to be back to normal gravity sometimes? Over. Sometimes when I lose things and I know, you know, at home on Earth you would, you could look down on the ground and find stuff. That's when I wish I was back on Earth. But generally, I know I'm only up here for a short time, so I don't miss Earth that much. Over. Did your plans for your future change by being space? Over. You know, it's interesting. You get a new perspective from being up here when you're looking down at our Earth, and it's so beautiful. And uh, you think about people and, uh, and how much you miss the things on Earth, which are really the people. And that uh, that is something that I'll be happy to come home to, and I think I just appreciate my family and friends more. Over. What do you most being on the ISS? I think I just my job today. Thank you for the nice contact.